Well, hello everybody, and we are on day seven of no electric hookup. Uh, we are wild camped uh, in a parking slot uh, near uh, Brighton uh, Caravanning Motorhome Club site. Near, not at. Um, it's literally on the driveway up to the uh, caravan site, and there are some parking slots on the uh, on the way back out so um, we drove up turned around came back you can park here for um, six hours at a time well that's during the restricted parking but um, it's free parking from uh, 4 p.m. until 9 a.m. so it's a great place to well camp and you can see out of the window behind me they are that's the sort of green space uh, up in this area. We're near um, East Brighton Park um, and very close to the marina. And uh, we're going to, well, we're going to be away from here by about uh, midday. So I paid for parking, um, I paid two pounds for uh, three hours parking, um, which I thought was okay. But I, but what I'm going to do is just give you another update on the battery situation. Um, I've not checked it yet this morning, so let's do that live now and we'll see how we're getting on. Ah, <laughs> okay, so the battery capacity is at 98%. Um, we're actually getting two, uh, Nearly three, uh, two and a half, two and a half to three amps of solar input, um, which is, uh, well, that's the most I've seen it actually. But the uh, out of the roof light here, you can see I'm just standing underneath the sort of cab area roof light, and look at the blue, blue, blue sky. <coughs> There's a few little fluffy clouds up. Um, but it is a warm day and uh, we're going off. Uh, well, I think we're going to do a pub stopover tonight um, down near Peacehaven because we're meeting up with uh, some family. Um, we're going to have uh, dinner and then do the pub stopover thing. Um, but let's, let's just have a look again at the battery. Um, 98%. Nearly three amps, so between two and a half and two point nine amps coming in. Uh, but if I scroll through, you'll see the vehicle battery here. The vehicle battery never really drops below sort of two point five, uh, sorry, twelve point five, um, because it's never used apart from just to start the engine, and it gets replenished um, when when we're driving along. Also. Uh, on the leisure battery we're at 13 or 12.9 13 volts and I've been asked about uh, the water situation as well well if we've got a full tank it would it would appear that we could probably last for between six and ten days um, of normal use um, I think you know we're we're out and about most of the time, so having sort of drinks out, uh, so there's not much being used. We use a bit for washing, obviously. Um, so <clears throat> we're we're actually down to um, we're down to below fifty percent on the water tank on the fresh tank, and we've got a little bit in the waste tank. Um, what I do with the waste tank while we're sort of on the road is I, you know, try and stop near a drain and just open it up um, because it's effectively um, just normal water. There's, you know, a bit of water and a bit of um, washed up liquid going down, maybe some tea. <laughs> um, so it's not really any bad stuff. Um, we do need to stop in to uh, campsites uh, on occasion to empty the toilet cassette and I'm sure some of you will be asking about that. Um, we mainly use um, K2 
cafes and pubs and so on to sort of uh, go to the toilet and we try to use the onboard toilet as little as possible so that we don't um, don't fill it up um, certainly it's only liquid going down there um, so no solids uh, at all so uh, I think we're we're pretty we're pretty good on that um, I have heard stories about people going into uh, McDonald's with their toilet cassette in a bag and then emptying it in there. Um, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not quite sure that McDonald's would be happy about that. And I, uh, for one, I'm not happy about going anywhere near a McDonald's. Um, I, I don't know, anyway. But there, that's that's where we are, that's what we're doing. Um, I've, I've just ordered some stuff on Amazon and one of those things is a uh, 10 litre water carrier, a food grade water carrier. It was only like less than two pounds, um, but it's like, a, it's like a carrier bag that's food grade and made for water, carrying water. It's got a, it's got a lid, so it's sealed at the top. Um, and I thought, well, if we're getting down low and, we, uh, and we're not near a caravan site that we can check into to, you know, fill up the water, empty the cassettes and so on. Um, uh, you know, I thought, well, let's, let's just get something that I can get some water in from, you know, uh, a garage or a, or a restaurant or a local shop, or, you know. And I've I've read that a lot of a uh, lot of local shops, you know, the little shops are happy to fill up. You know, if you're buying a you know a loaf of bread or whatever whatever you're buying, you know, um, uh, and you know as long as the container's not not 150 litre water container on wheels, then you you'd be all right. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm also told that. Uh, there's always a tap outside of a cemetery that you can use to fill up and the trick is you know just fill up a little bit at a time as you go along um do you know what i've never noticed taps outside cemeteries maybe some of the you know i look at some of the forums and it's a bit <clears throat> the information can be ridiculous and out of date and completely spurious at times so it's to be taken with a pinch of salt and then checked out but for sure I'll be looking around for places that we can fill up with water that's not going to cost us 25 quid when we book into a campsite uh, we are visiting some family up <clears throat> up near the M25 we will be booking into a campsite there um, for four nights was going to cost us £76 um, and even though you know even though we say well we don't need electric um, probably won't use the electric at all um, we will fill up with water and we will empty the toilet cassette so you know there's value in it um, maybe I think maybe in the future once a week we'll check in to the cheapest site we can find with water and chemical emptying and and just you know take the hit on that bearing in mind uh the campsite we just come from um at the haberdasher's arms was seven pounds and i could have filled up the water there probably should have done um didn't think about it uh i'm not sure they had chemical waste um so but we we had emptied um we'd emptied the cassettes at oh yeah at the uh at the weekend stay so we had a you know a thing there um also what we're going to do is we are going to be um looking up to do some rallies they are um they're a cheap way to travel around the country they're all over the country and um, they always have uh, water and they always have chemical waste uh, no no they always have chemical waste and sometimes have water um, but especially you know in their in their sort of function rooms they'll have the availability for you to go and get water uh, so there you are 
Anyway, uh, we're going to crack on with the rest of the day and we'll give you a bit of a roundup uh, later on. Um, I'm pleased to say that Pippin is so much better. She's fine. I think I was just, I, I was tired and I was just overreacting yesterday about her. I know she was in pain and she, was. she did sleep and she lay down all the time and she didn't really want anything to eat. But I was all set to take her to the vets this morning, but she's been, she's fully recovered and she she's was, had a she nice was just run. Back to normal. Yeah, this she was morning. just bruised, I think it was, after the, the attack and she's been very fine and we've had a lovely day we've had our third son over with his three girls and, and we've had a lovely time we've had yeah. a nice meal in the pub with them all and it was good to catch up and unfortunately though our daughter-in-law was at work so work. yeah so, so but special otherwise... special hello the grandchildren because we were told that they watch today. So, hello. Yes, hello. <laughs> it was lovely to see you, my yes. darlings. Yes, we love you all and miss you very much. So, so it was um, good fun. We're at the um, we're at the pub stopover. Yep. In um, Tailscombe, Peacehaven, and um, this is the sort of view that we're getting for the sunset. There's a, just a couple of little pictures of what we. Uh, can see out, out of, of the window. front of the um, motorhome. Yeah. Mm. It is massively windy. I mean, seriously, you open the door and you have to really, really push hard to, mm. to push it against the wind. Actually, when we were coming in, it nearly blew me over. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's good. that strong. Mm. Um, we're up on a on a uh, hill. No, uh, we're on the cliff top. Well, we're on the cliff tops, yeah. So, mm. yeah. Right, so I suppose uh, that's why. But and that way, the pictures you've just seen are towards Brighton. Mm. Um, and the wind's coming in fiercely strong. But we've um, we've had quite a good day. We've been pipping and recovering. Yes, the best news. Yes. Seeing the seeing the kids. Um, mm. Yeah. And having a really lovely time with yes, them. Yes, we have. Uh, we've been out, for, we've just got back from a walk. Yes. My, actually my fingers are stinging from yeah. the cold wind. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> all good. All good, yes. Yeah, so. I can't uh, believe this British weather, like one week it's so boiling, boiling hot. And then we've got this weather, it's just like, it's just not ordinary weather. The wind is so, so strong along the coast here. It's just weird yeah. and feel really really cold too it's a bitterly well, cold wind well out there yeah the wind the wind is blowing so hard it just goes right through you it's one of those cutting mm. winds mm. Mm. anyway but it's sunny and tomorrow i'm sure it's going to be warmer and we'll be able yeah. to sit out and enjoy the the sea air and the views tomorrow because it's beautiful up here yeah and that little hidden gem again isn't it here hidden gem so, um, on the battery front, I've, uh, I've ordered some bits. I think I might have mentioned it earlier in the video, but it's been nearly a day since I said it. I can't remember whether I did or not. But I've ordered some bits, um, and the plan is to have another one or two uh, batteries installed, and then an inverter. And I know some people have said, don't get an inverter, it's just a lot of expense for not very much use. But when you're living in this all the time, those little, I would call them home comforts, are probably quite important. And when you're away from electric hookup, which we are going to be more and more, you sort of start to miss the, the, just the little bits um that you can't run off of 12 volt yeah don't you you do yeah. but you, yeah. i suppose i was going to make some soup and then i thought oh no i can't make any soup that was one thing i missed yeah um and just defrosting things oh yeah the in, microwave in the yeah. microwave yeah um so i'm going to buy 
the well I'm going to buy the best value inverter that I can find it's going to be pure sine wave if anyone's worried about that um, it's going to be um, remotely switched so that we'll, we'll have a switch in here that we can switch it on and off when you don't need it when you're not running those 230 volt appliances but you leave that inverter switched on it will use your battery power so we'll switch it off when we don't need it and then back on when, when we want to use it um, and one of the other things is that you know, charging up the vacuum cleaner yeah because you know that's although essentially it could you know, maybe it could be charged off of the 12 volt but it comes with its own little charger pack and things so easier and then you know I think we'll I think we'll book into sites maybe once a week um, just to get things sorted out but I you know we we've, we've been off grid since um, Thursday last week so that's a week yeah, I'm trying to think it's when we last. Wednesday today, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's Wild Camp Wednesday. That's it. Tomorrow, it's Thrilling Thursday. <laughs> All the thrills of living in a motorhome full time. Anyway, so that's it. Can I just remind you that um, we really appreciate you giving us a thumbs up? Yes and um, please subscribe if you haven't already done so on the 1st of June this channel will have been running for two years yeah. Yeah, cool. and I'm hoping that you guys can support us enough to, to build us up to 2,000 subscribers by the 1st of June we've got, we got five weeks to go mm. so I'm going to be reminding you more often that if you haven't yet subscribed please do and if you would maybe click the share button and share it to all your friends that are interested in motorhome living caravan living uh, on facebook or twitter or wherever else you want to share it and i think tomorrow we'll talk about a few things that um i think have affected me since we have not got a not got a postal address so oh yeah yeah so mm. but anyway so we're going to go now and i'm going to get me get me jammies on and snuggle up because it's blooming cold okay get cozy won't we yeah yeah, yeah. so so we're going to we say go. good night now and i'm going to say good night steve say, go <laughs> <laughs> say goodbye wend goodbye Say goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everyone. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Yeah.